Okay. Um, hi, Michelle. It's really nice to meet you. I'm Hello. Sarah, I'm Sarah Wynn and I'm the CEO of Unique. And I thought it'd be a lovely opportunity to talk to you about what life with Valentino was really like. So first yeah. of all, I just wanted you to tell us a little bit about how Valentino's rare chromosome disorder has affected him and a little bit about Valentino himself. Um, Valentino is a lovely, gentle, spirited little boy. He's the sweetest thing. Um, but he is very affected by his um, chromosome deletion. So the features that you know are described in the leaflets with his particular um, chromosome deletion are on severe end. Um, he's he's nonverbal. And I say nonverbal because, you know, he doesn't make any sort of um, any any kind of um, sense of linguistics or, you know, he doesn't even he can't even sound any sort of words or anything like that. The noise that he makes all the time is gig, 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 and that's it, you know. So um, uh, I don't know. People say, oh, you know, you never know. They might speak. Uh, I don't I just personally don't really think he, he's able to. Um, but that's, you know, one of the things. Um he's autistic um and he is has ADHD. These these are all things that are on the guide as well that we referred to when we found out he had a chromosome deletion. Um and he has learning disabilities as well. Um Shell, um, maybe yeah. you could tell us how old Valentino is. Now. Valentino is coming up to eight years old. He'll be eight in August. And um, we found out that he had a chromosome deletion because, um, you know, he was genetically tested because he had cancer as a baby. So part of the testing for his cancer was genetic. And that's when, you know, we found out a little bit later on that he had a chromosome deletion. Um, the particular one that he has is called 15Q13.3. And, you know, it can be very mild in people. And, you know, I, I think that I think it's 50 percent of children that have it aren't even affected by it. So, you know, that was something we were told when when we were looking into his deletion and we found out about it. Um, but it turns out that, yeah, unfortunately, he does have it on the severe end. Yeah, and I think that's one of the things about chromosome deletions, duplications and gene changes is that the variety can be huge. There's a yeah. spectrum of how people are affected. And that can be really difficult when you first get a diagnosis because you don't really yes. know what's going to come in the future or what to expect. It's it's a double-edged sword in a way because you were so grateful to find out this information. I mean, information is you need as much information as you can when your child has additional needs and you want to know every single little thing about them so you can understand them better and help them you know yeah. in this world but it's also really hard when you first find out I think I mean personally for us we found it a really really hard hard thing to get our heads around and it was a shock and it took a lot of adjustment and it put us through the mill you know it was a sort of fearful thing and you know it was all new to us Valentino obviously was very young when we found out the news that he had this chromosome deletion uh, deletion um he was just a baby so you know we were sort of watching his progress and seeing you know him not reach any of the milestones that so we did know we did understand that at least we had that and we didn't feel like we were going crackers you know I mean I know so many yeah, people yeah they don't have the opportunity to have this genetic testing and therefore they don't know they just assume that they might have autism or this or that but you know we were very lucky to find that out but like I say with that luck of finding out it's also incredibly difficult to get your head around and yeah, accept it's, it's an acceptance yeah, thing it is and that often takes a little while to move from the sort of shock and yeah um, unexpectedness of it into that acceptance yeah it um, takes a while it takes a while and you go through a range of things it's really difficult you know you go through a range of struggles and emotions as a parent and fears and I don't think you can really underestimate that journey um from first finding out to you know understanding more about it 
and to accepting it, it's it's a journey. It really is. And it, it shouldn't be underestimated because it's incredibly difficult. Yeah. And that's, I think, what we hope Unique can do is help provide other people who understand that journey yeah. you're on. Even if their children have different genetic conditions, that journey yeah. is a similar one for lots of parents. Yeah, that's um, right. So, Michelle, my next question was going to be, and you've touched on this a bit already, what has been the most challenging aspects of of having a child with a rare chromosome disorder? I think, obviously, it's the disability side of, of, you know, these disabilities um, and also the fears that come with that. You know, Um, it's not just the challenging behaviour and the complex um, needs and, you know, the way you live your life uh, from day to day um it's it's exhausting you know it's it's really difficult a lot of you know I know a lot of other parents will find that the children have terrible sleep patterns um and crazy sleep patterns and that affects you and it's the day-to-day of all of these needs that the child has and you know if they're autistic as well and non-verbal it's the frustration their frustration I mean um of not being able to communicate um and I think that it's their odd behavior and you can't do the things that you used to do and you know if you wanted to go out um with certain friends that you used to sort of easily go out with of your other kids it's a whole thing you know you don't want your child to run away I mean our son runs away all the time and it's just a nightmare trying to keep him safe um he has you know very little um awareness of danger at all so it's all these things that are your day-to-day um, and then, of course, you have, you know, um, the fears of the future, which is constantly kind of on your mind, you know, and you try and put it back because you've got to get through the day. But it's always there. And I think that that's really difficult as well. Just, you know, trying to project into the future and and wondering how they're going to be when they reach adulthood um, and how these challenges that they have you know how that's going to be um, and what to do and how you're going to manage them as they're older and um you know what what you 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 shouldn't think about things like this but you do you think about what happens when you're gone you know and unfortunately I don't think that um you know there's there are there is support out there uh, for disability but I think that children's services and disability has been way down on the list and it's it's you know it's it's diabolical how you try to get help and you have to fight for absolutely everything um it's not made easy at all and um you know you you, you end up fighting for what actually is a right for your child you know absolutely yeah. fighting to for nail to be able to get small little things for your child and help and support so yeah. that's ongoing as well yeah that's the downside that, it really is it's very tough I think lots of our families will share your experiences there but I thought you at the beginning you said about Valentino being the sweetest yeah. most full of joy little boy so perhaps you could tell us a little bit more about one uh, of the rewarding aspects of parenting Valentino Well, I think one of the most rewarding um, qualities of Valentino is that, yeah, he is gentle, sweet. He's a good boy. He he has his crazy little funny little ways of seeing the world. And but he loves music and he loves dancing. Well, he tries to die. You you have to sort of think, well, what's he doing there? Oh, he is dancing. You know, he's running (laughs) up and down the room. But um, he loves music and he loves dance and he just has these huge big eyes that you fall into and he just stares up at you all the time and you know is just so loving he's a loving little boy um and you know there's milestones that you do reach and they may be not on the you know normal um, milestones but any little milestones that your son reaches in baby steps is huge for a special needs parent you know and something and, to celebrate and something to really celebrate I mean we get so excited by the little things that he manages to do and does and um he's recently learned to swim you know his dad has taught him how to swim um Valentino is very physically agile um he um you know climbs absolutely everything and does you know get himself into dangerous situations sometimes if he's not watched 
but he is you know a little swimmer now and he has no fear of the water at all so he dives and he's just like a fish you know these are all amazing things that he can do um and you know he makes me laugh the way he gets his own way with me sometimes you know <laughs> and how he can manipulate the situation so get what he wants you know because he's so charming he just has yeah. this little smile and he will, he'll play you you know he knows he knows what's he's what he's doing in a lot of ways so he's um, smart yeah he's so much fun he's a lovely little boy and he loves tickles and he loves playing hide and seek um you know with his brothers as well and you know he's he's just a great little boy he he's, sounds adorable joy. yeah he is a joy and everybody loves him you know he's got a lot of affection for people and um he's also picks up on vibes you know i really I really feel that with valentino he he feels people's vibes and he will decide immediately, you know, pretty much if he likes you or not, you know, he's, <laughs> he's very much like that. A good judge of character. He is a good judge of character. And if someone isn't paying him much attention, then he will cut you dead. You know, <laughs> as soon as they are, he's your friend, you know, oh, oh, he, sounds, he sounds so lovely. So you've talked a bit about this new journey that you've been on with Valentino. Maybe yeah. you could say a little bit about how unique has been there to help yeah. and support you on that journey. I think I spoke to Unique first when I was in the midst of um, going through quite a hard time with understanding everything that was happening with Valentino, understanding him, trying to get my head around it, and also, you know, preparing for this new life, this new world that I was in that I, I didn't feel like I wanted to be in and, you know, felt angry that I was in. And I felt angry that my little boy had all these things, you know, uh, additional needs and complex, um, you know, health problems and whatnot. Um, and I talked to Unique quite early on and I found that they were so supportive and kept referring me back to the guides. Um, I, I spoke with them and... I think that I was in a place where I was a little bit too angry and upset to take any advice at that particular point. Um, and, you know, the advice that Uni gave me was kind of falling on deaf ears a little bit at that particular time. Um, I rang Unique again a little bit further into my journey. And I found then that that's when I was helped the most um, because I was ready to hear it. You know what I mean? You've got to be in a place where you're yeah. ready to sort of hear it and hear advice and um otherwise you're not really listening um but their service was uh amazing and um you know i got help with letters to write to to dla you know and i got um i got advice um more advice about the, the chromosome deletion um and time you know to sort of go through that with me properly so i could try to understand it a little bit more um and then also the service that's offered to match you up with other people um whose children have the same uh, genetic deletion or muta mutation or addition or whatever as you do which is um an incre incredible thing um i've got to say i haven't used it yet but i plan to and um i'm looking forward to that to kind of just seem other people out there because it's rare what my son has that there are other people out there whose children have exactly the same as him so it's quite you know amazing it's overwhelming almost to think that I can talk to them yeah thanks, and to, I think, thanks to unique thanks to unique I can do that yeah and I think it's important to remember that all the things that are on offer are on offer for whenever you need them and that yeah. will be at a different time for different people and it often does take a while to join unique or contact us or contact other families i think so i think that unique are experts in knowing that about their parents as well they understand that there is a journey to go on and you could be at any stage of that particular yeah. journey you know um yeah and that's what's important is that they don't overload you um you know you get given the right advice at the right kind of time and then it's it's something you go back to as well. I mean, I yeah. felt like I, I wanted to go back to Unique and ask more questions. And yeah, I felt I felt that it was a very 
um, important and um, good service for, for my son, you know, and it, it, it's helped me in so many ways to understand him better. So, yeah, it's been so helpful. That's good to hear. And my final question is, what advice yeah. would you pass on to any parents who've just received a diagnosis of a rare chromosome or gene disorder? I would say, um, you know, first of all, I know how hard it is. Um, I know how difficult this is. And I know that they're probably feeling a million different things. And all of those things and emotions that they're feeling are okay. They're normal. Um, but my advice would be is that you just have to feel all these things, unfortunately, and go through this. Um, but it will get better. I mean, you grow along with your child and you learn day by day. Um, and, you know, it does get better. It's, I'm, I was told that when when I was on my journey with it, you know, and I did take it really badly. Um, I, I really struggled with it at first and um, I didn't really want to hear anybody give me advice. I just thought, well, you know, you, you probably your child isn't isn't severe needs like mine or I don't I'm not like you. I don't feel like that, you know, but. Um, the only thing is that it is true. And I wish that I had to listen to other people that were advising me a bit more to, who were telling me that it would get better because it does. And you get stronger and you get wiser and you will pull out stops that you didn't think you could do. And you will become somebody that is um, good enough to cope with this and to deal with it. Um, but you've got to believe that even on your darkest days, it's 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 hard. It's a tough journey really is and I would say also to really try and use unique um uh, as much as you can and um you know even if you're in that beginning of the journey it's it's tough but really try to to use unique because it's a fantastic service and it will give you a lot yeah great thanks so much Michelle that's all right